Now what we're going to do today, we've done the uh, shellac style cabinets and you can see this one here is a sewing machine cabinet, Singer which has been wonderfully painted and we're really really lucky because they haven't undercoated this properly so you can see as it's dried it's starting to peel off so this is going to make it very very easy to take off and I'll show you how normally I'd use this style, our so what scraper but this is my homemade job it's a little bit heavier and I sharpen it with a uh, oil stone which um, makes it a little bit better to use but uh, what we'll do is I'll, we'll put this down the camera that is and what I'll do is just show you how easy it is to actually do this so you can see here see, see how the paint's just totally lifting and we're very lucky even on the edges here So judging by the colour of this paint, I think we might be able to say this has been done quite a while ago. Now you can see here where some of the shellac is still retained on. And that's where I'll use a little... You notice I don't try and use the full width of the scraper. I'll just come across about a quarter of it onto the area I'm stripping and that makes it so much easier but I'll get onto this and then we'll um, get back to you later. Let's so bear with me. Track. So you can see all I've done is just given that a once over with the old so what scraper and my homemade job and you can really see how darn good this has come out so now we've given it a sweep we'll just give it a little once over for some just remembering that you always go with the grain As you can see across this joint here, even though I've gone across at an angle, I'm still going with the grain. And this will just stop chipping and rounding the corners. So 10 minutes already. Again, we're lucky because this, is, this has had more um, sun on it. So this, this is going to be the easy one to come off. Probably down the front here or more likely the back which has had less light on it. It may not be as perished as bad. But anyway this is 10 minutes so what we'll do We'll get my favourite little product, the pale boiled linseed oil. I'll just get rid of 
some of that. There's a few areas I've missed there. Let's just put that on. And I can already hear you saying from here, wow, that's impressive. And we'll probably be putting about three coats of the pale boiled oil on it, but the first coat you put on, she's going to absorb in. And as I'm doing this, you'll notice that certain areas of it will be drying. And this is what we want. We want it to go into the actual timber. Don't worry too much about a few little spots that you may have left because the oil will actually go into the timber and soften that paint that's left and make it easier to lift. But you can see how sparingly this is used. Again with the steel wool, here I've used triple O steel wool. There's a few areas with a little bit of lighter colour and once this is soaked in we'll then go back with the scraper and just tend to those spots and then we'll give it another coat. But for 10 minutes work that's pretty impressive isn't it? Right so that's not a bad start so now we're going to do is open it up and see what's underneath. Well surprise surprise. I don't think I'm shocked. But again, you can see the coarseness here of it. So let's just have a look and Once you've got that first strip done, you can just work off that. slightly on the corner here look at that even the metal they've painted that'll probably just flake off But normally what I would do here was go over it with some 180 sandpaper. But what we'll do here is I'll just give it a quick sweep. Couple of corners. And yes, you've got it. The old pale boiled linseed oil. And the beauty of putting this on for the first coat is you can see exactly the spots that you've missed. So you can actually go up to double O steel wool or even O steel wool, but the coarser you get, the more chance you're going to have of um, damaging the timber. So we'll just let that soak in for a sec. We'll then wipe it off again with the grain. I've got a few little touch-ups I need to do, but just in that short period of time, 
what an absolute incredible job. Going with the grain and with the scraper and pale boiled oil. Thank you and good luck with yours. Right, now we've done the top. We'll just give this a quick second once over. And I've also done the inside. Um, because that doesn't get as much sun as the top, it wasn't as easy. It took me about half an hour to do the hole underneath. But it is almost twice the size as well, so I suppose on a ratio that's probably not too bad. But you can already see the condition that this has come up from that absolutely wonderful brown streaky paint that they put on. So I'm just going to put this on. We'll then open up and have a look at the inside and we'll give that one coat. And we'll just let this soak in for a while. So you can see there and here we go. We'll just do it best if I take the cap off. It makes it a hell of a lot easier to use. But again, this one being underneath and out of the weather, this actually should come up a bit better than the top. Don't worry too much about little pieces of paint. You can see there's a few flecks which have been left on there. Don't worry too much about that because once the oil's been on for a while it'll just make it easier to lift that off. But you can see what a gorgeous finish this is and I've only been at it for an hour it's certainly by no stretch of the imagination a professional finish but I think it's very very realistic finish and simple Again, try wherever you can of going with the grain. There's a few little dents in here where paint has been left, but I'm going to leave that there because if I've got a sand or pick that out, I'm just going to put a bigger hole in there. And as far as I'm concerned, this will always be a painted cabinet which has been stripped. So just leaving a little bit in there is um, just a bit of character. I'm not too worried about the paint on the hinges because that eventually will lift as well. So you can see exactly how absolutely beautiful this finish is. I did mention that I use a homemade scraper uh, plus we've also got the So What scraper. The So What scraper has a carbide blade on it so it's very brittle, very sharp and it retains its sharpness. Where the heavier one that I made the problem is being a softer metal it um, blunts quicker so just to do this alone, I've probably had to sharpen it about four times. But I used the lighter one to go over and actually finish 